Good evening, everyone. It's time to get started. We have a good number tonight. We're glad you're here, especially for visiting with us. Uh, we're glad that you're present with us this evening, and uh, we hope you can be back with us. We consider you our honored guest, and if you would like to stay this evening for our fellowship meal, uh, we'll put you first in line. There's some motivation there. So um, anyway, we're glad you're here, our members and our visitors. And uh, just a few announcements before we get started. I do have an update on our sick. Uh, I got word that uh, Dolly Gargas is not feeling well. You know, she was you probably missed her this morning. Uh, she is home, but not feeling well. She's having some pain in her legs. So let's uh, keep her in our prayers. Remember, the Teen Devo will be next week. Um, I'm sorry, tonight after services. Is that right? Uh, oh, okay. Okay, so an activity tonight after the meal, uh, which is our fellowship meal this evening. Remember, Service Team 3, that you're responsible for helping uh, clean up after that. If you will, please stay and, and help get that done. The prime timers, you're having a potluck game night Tuesday, August the 9th, in the fellowship hall beginning at 6. Also remember the uh, baby shower for Rachel Reynolds. It's Sunday, August the 14th from 2 to 4 at the home of Pam Rosenblum. Keep that in mind. No puppets tonight, so hopefully you have your children with you this evening. Thank you, Card to Read. Thank you for your prayers, cards, and calls uh, during my recent illnesses and Christian love from Lois Webster, and he is doing much better. Greg Richard will be making the announcements in the month of August, so get him your announcements if you have any. Our opening prayer tonight will be led by Doug Deaton. Closing prayer by Brady White. He'll take a song book and turn number 839. Number 839 will be our opening song. Let's begin our worship in prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank thee for this day. We thank thee for the many blessings that you've showered down upon us. Pray that you'll help us to see these blessings that you've given us. Pray that you'll help us to be thankful to you for giving these blessings to us. Pray that you'll help us to focus our mind on home in heaven with you. Pray that you'll help us to not dwell on those things here. Pray that you'll help us to not have a heart that seeks after the things of this earth in this life but lays up treasures for heaven or for heaven with you pray that you'll be with this church here pray that you'll help us to open our hearts to your word help help us to put your word into our hearts and help us to be good examples to those that we come in contact with each day pray be with the elders as they guide this body here pray that you'll help them to always see those paths that are right in your sight Pray that you'll be with the Moriarty's as they suffer their loss. Pray you'll be with Dolly Gargas and bring her back to health. But most of all, we thank thee for the love that you've showered down upon us and that you sent your only son to die on that cruel cross so that we one day can have a home in heaven with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to be doing uh, singing tonight, and I uh, hope you'll join right in, get your hymn book, and focus in on the words and meaning of these songs. We'll start with 839 tonight. We'll do the first and the last stanzas, please. <clears throat> what a song of delight in the city so bright, we'll be laughing beneath heaven's fair dome. How the ransom will raise happy songs in his praise when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, whenever a sorrow will come, there'll be no place like home when all of God's singers get home. Having overcome sin, hallelujah, amen, will be heard in that land of the foam. Every heart will be light and each face will be bright when all of God's singers get home. When all of God's singers get home, whenever a sorrow will come, there'll be no place like home. Where 
God's singers get on. Very good. <clears throat> now number 226, 226. We'll do the first and the last. <clears throat> oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the world thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power through shall come with shout acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble and there proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior, God, to thee. How great thou art. Number 641, 641. <clears throat> we'll do the first, second, and last of this. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me die.
now we'll get some other leaders up here. Uh, Matthew Weaver, Heath Rosenblum, and Joel Hetty. Five hundred twenty-seven. Five hundred twenty-seven. <clears throat> Do the first and third verses. As I travel through life with its trouble and strife, I have a glorious hope to give cheer on the way. Soon my toll will be your, and I rest on that shore where the night has been turned into day. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose. Tis the wonderful flower we love. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the roasting garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Number 243, <clears throat> 243, again, the first and the last. <clears throat> if for the prize we have striven after our labors are o'er, rest to our souls will be given on the eternal shore. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam. Free from all care, happy and bright, Jesus is there, he is the light. Off in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Soon the bright homeland adorning, we shall behold the glad dawn. Lean on the Lord till the morning, trust till the night has gone. Home of the soul, beautiful home, there we shall rest, never to roam. Free from all care, happy and bright, Jesus is there, he is the light. Off in the storm, lonely are we, sighing for home, longing for thee. Beautiful home of the ransom beside the crystal sea. Four hundred twenty-one. Four two one. We'll sing the first and third verses. 
I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, from the waters lifted me, now safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. Souls in danger look above, Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help, love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, could help love lifted me now number 850 850 father i Eight seven two. We'll sing it through twice. Eight seven two. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life that I now live in the flesh I live by the faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
Number 755. 755. We'll sing the first and the last verse. 755. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. All right, y'all keep going now with it. Uh, Seth Bowen and then Chad Bowen and after that uh, Ben Hooten. Three fifty one. Three five one. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all hold dear, now is at stake. Humble your heart to God, save from the chastening rod. Seek the way pilgrims try, Christians away. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, heavenward bound. Troubles will soon be o'er, happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from our care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Home when we then will fly, glory to share. Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound. All of the dead shall rise, righteous meet in the sky, going where no one died, heavenward bound. Eight seventy. Eight seven zero. We'll sing the first and second verses. I'm happy today, oh yes, I'm happy today in Jesus Christ. I'm happy today because he's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm happy today. I'm singing today, oh yes, I'm singing today. 
In Jesus Christ I'm singing today. He's taken all my sins away. And that's why I'm singing today. Number 864. 864. I want to know Christ and the power of his rising, share in his suffering. Conform to his death when I pour out my life to be filled with his spirit. Joy follows suffering and life follows death. I want to know Christ and the power of his rising, share in his suffering, conform to his death. When I pour out my life, to be filled with his spirit. Joy follows suffering, and life follows death. Number 950. Your only son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, Sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Your gift of love, they crucify, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the holy Lamb of God. O wash me in His precious blood, my Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I was so lost, I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod and to be called a Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, 
sweet Lamb of God, I love the Holy Lamb of God. Oh, wash me in His precious blood till I am just a Lamb of walked into the building this evening and I, I met Kerry and he asked me if I wanted to lead a song tonight and I said, oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> well, anyway, we'll give it a shot. I want to try number 369, Jesus the Loving Shepherd. Number 369. Jesus the loving shepherd calleth thee now to come into the fold of safety where there is rest and room. Come in the string of manhood, come in the horn of youth. Into the fold of safety, into the way of truth. Lovingly, tenderly calling is he. Wanderer, wanderer, come unto me. Patiently waiting, there standing I see. Jesus, my shepherd divine. Lingering his but folly, wolves are abroad today. Seeking the sheep who are straying, seeking the lambs to slay. Jesus, the loving shepherd, calleth thee now to come. Into the fold of safety, where there is rest and room. Lovingly, tenderly calling is he. Wanderer, wanderer, come unto me. Patiently waiting, there standing I see. Jesus, my shepherd divine. Number 941. Number 941, I sing the mighty power of God. I sing the mighty power of God that made the mountains rise that spread the flowing seas abroad and built the lofty skies. I sing the wisdom that ordained the sun to rule the day. The moon shines full at his command and all the seas obey. I sing the goodness of the Lord that filled the earth with food. He formed the creatures with his word and then pronounced them good. Lord, how your wonders are displayed where I turn my eye. If I survey the ground I tread, or gaze upon the sky. In hand he shines with beams of love, with wrath in hell beneath. It's on his earth I stand or move, and it's his air I breathe. His hand is my perpetual God, he keeps me with his eye. Why 
should I then forget the Lord who is forever nigh? All right, good job, guys. I always like these newer songs we get to learn as well. Uh, left, let's see, Andrew came in. You up for this? Okay, all right. Come on up, and then uh, Steve Watson and Steve Harless. number 456 456 no tears in heaven no sorrows given all will be glory in that land there'll be no sadness all will be gladness when we shall join that happy band. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Glory is waiting, waiting up yonder, where we shall spend an endless day. There with our Savior will be forever, where no more sorrow can dismay. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Some morning yonder we'll cease to ponder o'er things this life has brought to view. All will be clearer, loved ones be dearer, in heaven where all will be made new. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, sorrow and pain will all have flown. No tears, no tears, no tears up there, no tears in heaven will be known. Number 682. 682. To God be the glory, great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his Son, who yielded his life an atonement for sin, and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Great things he hath taught us, great things he hath done. Great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son, but purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport, when Jesus we see. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. O oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory, great things he hath done. Five hundred twenty three. Five hundred twenty three. We'll sing all four verses. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. He tinted skies with heavenly hue and framed the worlds with his great mind. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live, and we survive from dust our God, created man, he is our God, the great I am. There was a long, long time ago, a God whose voice of prophets heard. He is a God that we should know, who speaks from his inspired word. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live, and we survive from dust our God. Created man, he is our God, the great I am. Secure is life from mortal mind. God holds the germ within his hand. Though men may search, they cannot find. For God alone does understand. There is a God, He is alive, in Him we live, and we survive from dust our God, created man. He is our God, the great I am. Son upon a tree, a life was willing there to give, that he from sin might set man free, and evermore with him could live. There is a God, he is alive, in him we live. And we survive from dust our God, created man. He is our God, the great I am. We'll turn to number 677, number 677, and mark that as our song of imitation. Now, if you'll turn to number 800, number 800. If everyone please stand, we'll sing the first and third verse of number 800. Zion's call sweetly rings over land and sea, bidding us look to realms above. While the light from the throne shines for you and me, let us 
restless to the call of love. Zion's call is ringing, coming from the throne above. While we hear it ringing, let us heed the call of love. While we tarry below, there is work to do, and our strength cometh from above. As we labor and wait, we must all be true. Let us listen to the call of love. Zion's call is ringing, coming from the throne above. While we hear it ringing, let us heed the call of love. Thank you, be seated. And it's been wonderful to sing these songs tonight. I know you've enjoyed them. We profit from our time together in every way in worship. But it is a very special thing when congregations sing. One of the great blessings that we have and commands from God is for us to lift our voices in song. Appreciate you being here with us tonight. You probably thought all of your, well, most of your song leading was over. Well, maybe all the good song leading is. Turn over to number 387 without losing the marker in your book. Um, as we sing all the songs about heaven and about God and those that inspire our trust and our confidence and our hope, there's one more, one more theme, one more idea, one more concept that we need to sing about. 387. Most of you have known this for a long time. That's good, so it won't be new to you. Lead me to some soul today. Oh, teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin and cannot find their way. Few there are who seem to care, and few there are who pray. Melt my heart and fill my life. Give me one soul today. When we spend our time in worship, it is appropriate for us to look up and honor God. It is appropriate for us to think of how God's blessings affect us and how that we should be filled with and thrilled with a knowledge of the love of Jesus, the grace of God that saves us from our sins, the Lamb of God whose life was shed, whose blood was spilt. But there's something that we have a role in, and that is making sure that the gospel of Jesus Christ does not stay in us as a container, but is spread from us as a distributor. I want to read a couple of passages tonight. I'm aware that our time here is short, and I'm, I'm just the reliever at this point. Luke chapter 4, time is not going to allow me to set the context completely as I would like. Beginning in the 16th verse, Jesus returns to his hometown of Nazareth. He goes to the synagogue. He is handed the book of Isaiah, and there he reads from it. And that reading is very interesting in verses 18 and 19. But he closes the book, verse 20. And he says to the audience there, the things that you've read, the things written by the prophet some 700 years ago are being fulfilled right here, now, as you witness them. 
Jesus was aware that his audience was not going to be receptive to him. He was a Nazareth hometown boy. And he said, you're going to say to me, heal yourself. I understand. A prophet is not without honor, except in his own country. And then he makes a statement that the the Jewish people there in Nazareth are going to be very offended by. Two stories. He said, there were many widows in the days of the prophet. But God did not send the prophet to a widow in Israel. He sent him, or he sent him to a woman who was outside of Israel, in Sidon. There were many lepers among the Israelites, but there were none of them healed, except for one, Naaman the leper, captain of the army of Syria. That statement in the 27th verse, there were many lepers in Israel, but none of them were healed. Why not? Let's go back to 2 Kings and read. I am going to spend some time reading here. But I'm going to limit the conversation to just a couple of very brief points and perhaps not the ones that we normally single out. Naaman, chapter 2 Kings 5.1, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master. Because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. The Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Verse 3, then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Naaman went in and told his master, saying, thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel, King of Syria sent Naaman with letters. I'm going to abbreviate some of this discussion uh, so that Naaman could go over and find the prophet Israel and be healed. Verse 7, it happened when the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and make alive that this man sends a man to me to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks a quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes. He sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Please, let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Naaman went with his horses and chariot, and he stood at the door of Elisha's house, and Elisha sent a messenger to him and said, Go wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored to you, and you shall be clean. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and heal the leprosy. Are not the Abana and the far, far the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. Verse 13. And his servants came near and spoke to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something great, would you not have done it? How much more then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. There were many prophets in the land of Israel in the day, or there were many lepers in the land of Israel in the day of the prophet Elisha. None of them were saved. None of them were healed. None of them were cleansed. Why not? It wasn't because the prophet wasn't there. It wasn't because the power of God wasn't there. The story of Naaman can be caused to be focused on just a couple of things. One of them is on the testimony of a young girl. The message that she told did not affect her, but she knew something. She knew something about God. She knew about the power of God, and she had compassion on others. This little girl was concerned about the well-being of another, and she spoke what she knew. There are many of us, 
the reason why I sang this song that we did a few moments ago. There are many of us who have around us friends who do not know Jesus. Lead me to some soul today. Teach me, Lord, just what to say. Friends of mine are lost in sin, cannot find the way. I don't know how many people around us every day are lost in sin, but many are. Had this young girl not been willing to speak what she knew, Naaman the leper would never have been cleansed. We could go on and provide many other things in this discussion. We could talk about the power of God, certainly the prophet of God who was able to uh, perform these miracles. But I want to pull out one more thread in our limited time here. After Naaman had found out about what he should do in order to have his leprosy washed away, he was incensed, he was outraged, he was angry. It didn't occur according to the way that he thought it ought to. And so he went away mad. And servants approached him. And they counseled him. And they said, if he had told you some great deed, would you not have done it? Why are you angry because of this? There are times in our lives where we may be around people who have become Christians. People who are on their way to heaven, but something in life has caused them to become distracted, to be bothered, perhaps to be angered, uh, to be frustrated by people, by whatever. And we have it in our power to provide a little counsel and a little perspective and offer them an opportunity to hear a message that will bring them back. There are in all of our circles individuals who at one time were faithful to the body of Christ who worshiped with us, who sang by you, who perhaps were in your Bible class. But something somewhere along the way has jarred them from where they once were and they are no longer on that path and it may be that you have the power you have the ability with the right word with a phone call with a note with just the right counsel to say if God had asked you to do some great thing would you not have done it why would you not do these little things? There were many lepers in Israel. None were saved but Naaman. Who is around us? What is your place in life? It may be that you do not see yourself as being great in the eyes of God or being great in knowledge, but you have access to people in life and it may be what they need to hear from you is a story, a simple story. If you would listen to the words of Jesus, you could be saved. Or it may be a little encouragement in the right place to the right person to say, if you would change your life just a little bit, you could be back. One caused a man to go to Israel. Another caused him to change his mind. We would describe this as repentance in action in the most true sense of the word. He turned and went back. Jesus tells the story in Luke. He doesn't tell us all the people who were involved. God knows who was involved. There will probably be very few people in heaven who were not influenced by others, either in their conversion or to remain faithful. We have that responsibility to others. Lead me to some soul today. Tonight, are you a Christian? Are you here in the body of Christ, part of the family of God, washed in the blood of Jesus because you have named his name? Jesus as the Son of God and been baptized for the remission of sins. But it may be tonight you need to make that step.
Jesus came and died so that you can have your sins washed away by his blood. Tonight, if you would submit to the, to the baptism that we read of in the New Testament and make the good confession with your mouth before this audience, you can be baptized, washed of your sins, added to the fold of God, and on your way to heaven. Are you a child of God, perhaps, and not faithful in his service any longer? Do you need to come back to the place where you began? If so, the invitation is for you tonight. If we can assist you in any way publicly, we invite you to come as we stand and sing. Seventy-three will be our closing hymn. Two seventy-three. <clears throat> You're visiting with us. We appreciate you coming our way, and hope you can come back again at a future date. We have Lord's Supper still prepared tonight. If you'd like to partake of it and make your way to the foyer, you'll be shown where you can be served. We'll do the first and the last stanzas before our closing prayer. I know the Lord will find a way for me. I know the Lord. Will find a way for me if I walk in heaven's light, shun the wrong and do the right. I know the Lord will find a way for me. Won't it be grand? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this day you've given us, Lord. We thank you for allowing us to come together here and worship you. Lord, please be with all the sick and those who have lost loved ones and that your comforting arm will help them through the difficult time. Lord, thank you so much for sending your son to die on the cross to wash away our sins and let us come home to be, with heaven, to be in heaven one day with you. In your son's holy and precious name we pray. Amen.